Yes. Well, I will tell you a little bit about myself. I am married. I have uh, four children. There you go. It's great, right? It's great. I love being a dad. It's no time alone. Can't be intimate with my wife. There's not a lock on her bedroom door. I got these sexual bouncers kicking the door open every five minutes. Poof, I need a drink. <laughs> There's not even a lock on the bathroom door. I can't even take care of myself, you know? I got to do that away from the house. So maybe when you hear about some guy who gets busted jerking off in a Denny's, maybe it's not some sick, disgusting pervert. Maybe it's just a good dad. <laughs> He's so goddamn judgy. We drove up. We drove up from, uh, I live in Los Angeles. Uh, I've been on tour for a little while now. I brought the whole family. I bought a trailer. We are, uh, we're all traveling, camping along the way. It's been an adventure. We drove from Los Angeles to Calgary, 33 hours with four kids in the back. And we broke down. We broke down in, uh, just outside of Pocatello, Idaho, on the I-15, middle of nowhere. Had to call a tow truck. Took the guy four and a half hours to get there. We had all, had all the kids on the side of the road trying to get some shade. It was 97 degrees outside. It was the 4th of July weekend. So my wife has the kids under the tree, kind of trying to keep them uh, cool. I'm walking around with my three-year-old. My kids are nine, six, three, and one. I got my three-year-old just kind of trying to keep him calm. The guy finally pulls up in the tow truck. I hike over there, and the guy jumps out, and he's a very typical small-town tow truck driver, kind of a girl's old, older fella, nice guy. You know, he goes, uh, looks at my truck, he goes, uh, Yukon, huh? I go, yeah. Yeah, he goes, your fuel pump's probably fucked up. <laughs> I looked at my little three-year-old mind like a sponge, and he's like, it's fucked up. <laughs> Appreciate that. So he goes, uh, I can uh, tow it in for you, but I can't tow the trailer as well. I got to call my son. I said, all right. So he calls his son, son shows up about 20 minutes later. He jumps out of his truck, looks at mine, he goes, uh, Yukon, huh? I go, yeah, yeah. He goes, your fuel pump's probably fucked up. He's like, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. <laughs> so they tow it into, uh, into Pocatello. Uh, I gotta get a hotel room, it's a long weekend, so it cost me 200 bucks for the hotel. Uh, he fixes the truck, turns out it is the fuel pump. <laughs> Uh, cost me a thousand bucks to get that fixed, so now I'm out of travel money. I got to get everybody to the uh, to the border. So we haul ass to the Canadian border, eight and a half hours. We finally get there. I've never been so happy to see the Canadian border in my life, and I, I'm a small town Canadian boy, and I was very happy to be back. And we pull up. The guys very, uh, you know, they're usually very stern and militaristic at the border. This guy very much was. He goes, uh, passports, please, and I hand him the uh, six passports. He starts thumbing through them. He goes, uh, Where are you headed? I said, uh, Calgary. He goes, uh, where are you coming from? I said, Los Angeles. And this is why I love Canadians, because he completely broke character. He leaned forward, looked at the four little kids at the back of my truck and went, holy Christ. <laughs> How was that? And I looked at my wife and she looked at me and from behind us we heard this tiny voice go, fucked up. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Travel, we're trying to keep the kids busy all the time too. Everywhere you go, everything you do, you're trying to find, and they always market things as fun for the whole family. I hate that term, fun for the whole family. That's bullshit. There's no such thing as fun for the whole family. <laughs> fun for the whole family be like a roller coaster with strippers on. At the end, you roll into a shoe store. That's fun for the whole family. <laughs> My six-year-old just had a birthday. My friend bought him a tent for his birthday. I thought that was a cool gift, you know, camp out in the yard. But now his favorite thing to do is go in the tent and play with his wiener all day. <laughs> all right, it freaked my wife out. She's like, how long does this phase last? I'm like, I don't know, with diet and exercise, 80, 90 years, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll be in the yard in my tent, I'll let you know. My wife is a, uh, she's a very nurturing mother. She's a fantastic mother. She's very protective of my boys, which, you know, I understand. She doesn't want them to watch any violent video, uh, play any violent video games, watch any violent movies or anything like that. And she won't even allow uh, toy guns or squirt guns, anything. I don't necessarily agree on that, but I respect her decision. So, you know, when she's not around though, my boy's favorite game is to play like cops and robbers, but we got to do this, you know, with the finger, because that's all we got. So it'd be like, bang, bang, bang. He's like, bang, I got you, dad. Ah! Don't tell mom. <laughs> so the uh, six-year-old started kindergarten this year, and the first day of class, the teacher got all the kids into a, uh, into a circle, and all the parents were there, and all the, uh, he had all the, teacher, uh, had all the kids stand up and tell what their favorite thing was that summer to kind of get to know each other. So this little girl got up, she's like, I went and visited my grandma and grandpa, and they had a swimming pool, and I swam every day, and it was amazing. 
And this little boy got off. He's like, I went to Disneyland, and I got to meet Mickey Mouse, and it was fantastic. And then my son stood up. He's like, my favorite part of the summer was a secret finger bang game I would play with my dad. We're gonna homeschool this year. <laughs> We're gonna homeschool. If you don't have kids, that's fine. That's fine, you know. If you don't ever wanna have kids, that's fine. I have no problem with that. I just don't like when people who don't have children wanna give me advice on how I'm supposed to raise my own children. You know, I read in a book one time. Let me stop you right there. <laughs> Did that book wake you up every 45 minutes for two years straight and repay your love and patience and kindness by taking a shit into your bare hand? No, then shut up. <laughs> People have a fantasy about what it's gonna be like to be a parent, and it is nothing close to reality. My children are only gonna watch learning programs. They're gonna watch a lot of educational films. They're not gonna watch cartoons and that garbage television. They're gonna watch things that teach them stuff. Let me tell you something, after three years of not sleeping, you don't care, you want the kid to shut up. You're like, what is this, Cape Fear? Good, sit down. You're gonna learn something. You're gonna learn you don't fuck with the wrong man. Daddy is having a nap, now shut it. I realize having the boys, I'm the one who's gonna have to give them the talk at some point, you know? And uh, they're young-ish, but the oldest is nine. I know it's coming soon, you know? I can't wait too long. He's gonna start seeing things and I don't want him to get freaked out by sex. I'm gonna have to sit him down and try to explain it to him. I'm gonna have to be delicate though, you know? I'd be like, son, you're gonna reach a certain point in life where you're gonna start to have feelings towards girls. Now, when men and women have these feelings towards each other, sometimes they share it's a special kind of hug. <laughs> now, sometimes after that hug, a baby will show up. And then you're gonna find you don't get to hug so much anymore after that. You'll just be home alone in the dark hugging yourself, thinking about that girl at work who's always giving you the hug me eyes and how you just like to hug the shit out of her. <laughs> All right, go finish watching Deer Hunter. I'm gonna be in my tent. My wife is, uh, she's a uh, beautiful woman. She's very loving. Um, in a lot of ways, she's kind of done with me after four kids, you know, and I understand it though. I understand it, you know, and I still love her. I'll tell you guys a story. This is 100% true. I dropped my kids off at school. Uh, the three-year-old and one-year-old were home. They were still asleep. I pulled into the driveway and I walked into the house and my wife didn't hear me come home. And I walked into the living room and I saw her in the kitchen putting some stuff away. I just stood there in silence, kind of staring at her, you know, and I, the mid-morning light was streaming through the window, illuminating her face and hair, and like I said, my wife is a gorgeous woman, and I just stare, stood there in silence, just kind of falling in love with her all over again. I'm like, look at this angel I got to spend the rest of my life with. I'm, I'm such a lucky guy, you know, and I came up behind her, and I slipped my arm around her waist, and she went, ugh. <laughs> Hour later, I was in handcuffs in a Denny's parking lot screaming, I'm a good dad! 